we're off. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, I would like to say thank you for this adorable hat that says vegan, but I don't know who to thank because it came to the P.O. box and we couldn't read anything on the address and there was no card. So if it's you, I love it. Please let me know who you are so I can thank you. So today's guest is named Chef Naomi. She is from Raw Fresno. She's going to be making some amazing recipes, including a no egg salad sandwich. And we're going to hear her story and learn about her as she feeds, nourishes, and educates us. Hi there. Nice to meet you. Oh, hi, Chef AJ. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm so glad that I finally get to have you inside my restaurant. I'm so excited about this. I am so excited about this because we're both, like you say, alumni of True North. And I'd love to hear your story of how you ended up there. Absolutely. Thank you. If I could kind of start out at the very beginning is, um, uh, gosh, how many years ago was it? It's so long ago. Uh, I think 18, 17 or 18 years ago, um, I had heard about True North a long time ago, but about eight year, 18 years ago is when my son passed away and he had celiac disease and I was unaware of this. And so I was feeding him the food that was killing him, believe it or not. And uh, so during that time of um, clarity and realizing that I am not, my son Ian is not here anymore. I realized that I needed to figure out something. I was just, just gone. I, can you imagine? And so when I realized and my doctor said, I was diagnosed with the same um, and I had dysbiosis, which was candida in the intestines. And my doctor said I needed to go gluten-free, sugar-free, dairy-free, vinegar-free, soy-free, yeast-free, peanut-free, corn-free. What is left? Is there anything left to eat? I told her. She says, well, there's fruits, nuts, and seeds, and green veg. And so that's what I did. Uh, overnight, I, uh, I turned into a raw terrian. And I had just... 30 days of experience, just about two months before this happened, um, I'd gone on a little 30 day raw food challenge. And so I was learning how to soak nuts and dehydrating these and making all kinds of fun things, you know, and I felt so good, so fast, like three days, I was feeling better. And, you know, as the weeks went on, no other symptoms were happening in my life. And it was amazing. And so I just went back to school and loved learning about this new lifestyle. I knew that I was going to do this for the rest of my life because I felt so good. I lost, I gosh, I think about almost 40, uh, almost 50 pounds in that first year of uh, turning raw. And my wife, she lost, well, I think between the two of us, we lost a hundred pounds <laughs> during the, and that was 17 years ago. And so we've been on this straight and narrow of delicious, vegan, plant-based, whole foods, whole foods, plant-based is our life. And um, so we began this and we continued on and we felt so good. And we were sharing with everybody and people were like, you need to teach this you need you know you need to have a restaurant and we're like oh that's just too much we're we're not we're Rio she teaches full-time she's a professor at Fresno City College and I'm I'm healing myself and healing my body and healing my wife we're eating food that is let thy food be thy medicine and I know I'm preaching to the gospel here right <laughs> Absolutely. So you are in your restaurant right now. I just want to let people know that that's why if they're hearing some background noise, you are at work. Yeah. So it turned out that um, when I went back to school and became a certified healing food specialist through immune nutrition, I came back and started teaching at Whole Foods. And, and it, I just had this great uh, audience, you know, 
every week they were coming to my classes and I got very popular and they were wanting me to actually just like prepare the food and deliver it to them. So I had a delivery service for quite a long time. And then I got introduced. People found out about me through a Kaiser Farmer's Market and uh, they invited me to come there. So I had a pop-up tent. So I told all my customers, just start coming to Kaiser on Wednesday and you can get your food there. So my group, my audience just continued to grow. And, and so I had the food truck. I mean, I thought I got a food truck. I, all of a sudden I realized I was in this tent and I was thinking, I need a food truck. So I just, one night it just came to my mind and I went on Craigslist and found a, a old used machine shop truck that was completely empty. It didn't have anything in it. And I, or I had it fabricated. I designed the kitchen. So it was a raw kitchen. So we named her Minerva after my mom, my grandma. And my granny Minerva, she lived so she was uh, 99 years old. And um, I knew I was going to be doing this a long time. And I needed to the strength of my granny uh, that she taught me all about the garden. And so long story short, after the food truck, then I had a restaurant. And during this time, I had heard about True North. And I thought, if I ever have a heal, an a ailment of some sort, how could I? But if I do one of these years in my older ages, then I would uh, go to True North. And so the last three years of my life, just presently, I was having allergies. I have no idea why, but the, I was allergic to things that I had been eating normally and I had been fine for years. I was allergic to almonds, coconut, um, beets there was like 60 it's like you <laughs> 60 different foods I, I couldn't eat anything and I just broke out with a rash all the time and so I contacted True North and um and talked to Dr. Goldhammer and he said that this is definitely something that could help me is uh going on the fast so I went for um 14 days of water only. And then I did seven days of refeed. And that was in October, exactly a year ago, this week, actually. And um, oh, I thought somebody was somebody's uh, here saying hi. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway. Uh, so where am I in the story? I can't. I'm sorry. I got a little <laughs> sidetracked there with the customers. True North. We were talking about True North. I got sidetracked too a little bit. Oh, okay. Sorry. So I went to True North and um, was there for 21 days. And it was the most amazing experience. When I left there, I was about 20 pounds lighter. And I um, had no ailments. I had no rash. My skin was completely clear. I could eat everything. I was eating already things that I hadn't been able to eat even before I left there. Like the beets, for instance, I couldn't eat beets before. And um, there was something else that I, but anyway. And so a year later, I still have not gained any of the weight back and I still can eat anything and I am not breaking out. Um, haven't had a rash at all since since I came before I went to True North, and that was a year ago. That's amazing. And, uh, yeah. What did you think of Dr. Goldhammer? He is very interesting. He, I, it was surprising to me. I didn't realize that um, he really wants you to introduce yourself and talk to him. People don't realize that, and I think because of who I am here. Like I'm kind of famous in Fresno kind of thing, you know, and you know how that feels when people are coming up to you and you're busy working or something like that. And, and, and we just do, we just take care of them. We love customers. They, they're, they're taking care of us. Right. But I know at times, and so I thought, oh, I shouldn't inter interrupt him. You know, I didn't want to talk to him while he was eating his lunch or eating his breakfast, you know, but uh, I heard really soon that, oh no, you go interrupt him because he loves it. And so I would have quite a few talks with him. And uh, 
I had one point wanted to open up a, a health center similar and uh, using the True North as a satellite uh, right here in our mountain area. But I'm not sure if that's really going to work out. I really oh, that would be amazing to have another True North. Right? I know. I was really excited about it. But... He's, he, he likes to talk with the patients. Have, did you ever eat, uh, have any of your meals with him? Yeah, I had, I ate lunch with him one time, um, but during the time that I was at True North, I, I like did this whole new ritual about food, you know, and I, I, I didn't want to eat fast. I wanted to eat very slow. And so a lot of times I would like go in before the food would even come in and take uh, a, make a plate of this cold food, the salads and everything, and like eat that very slow and by myself and not talking to anybody. And, and then when the hot food came out, then I would go and get my hot plate and, and I would like go and sit and tables without anybody just because it seemed like they wanted to talk and I wanted to just nourish my body with this food that it was just like heaven because of how delicious the steamed vegetables are. Those first juices and those first steamed vegetables. Oh my gosh, isn't it just amazing? I love it there. I haven't been there for a few years. I used to go every year. It's such a great place of healing and hope. Yeah, I, um, a friend of mine that I met while I was there, Pramila, she was there at Christmas last year. And I thought that you uh, was there doing a demo, possibly. And last time I was there would have been 2018. And then the program got canceled oh. next year because it got too popular and he, it was interrupting the fasting program. Uh, oh my gosh, wow holiday extravaganza did um did you ever do a cooking demo at true north i did i started to and um i was introduced or invited to do that the last time um so i've been there multiple times with not for myself but because my wife went rio and she was there for 21 days also and um so during the times they knew that i would be coming and going and picking her up and this and that. And so um, I was to do one, one day, and then I ended up doing it outside instead of inside because I was a visitor and COVID was still kind of, but anyway, so we did, we did, it was a fun little, uh, I think I did sprouting about sprouting, huh? Did I talk about sprouting? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I think at True North, that's what I taught about sprouting. Did you both do extended fasts there every time you went? Yes. Yes. Um, I did the 21 days and that was in October. And then on um, January, Rio got to go. It was, I think in January or February. And then she actually went a second time in June. And so, um, yeah, she's she's the rock star. She's the she's the mega athlete and is totally into researching for our health and longevity and well being. So she's my rock star. She feeds us the best drinks with all the nutrient mushrooms that we need to have. And I used to be allergic to mushrooms and I couldn't do any of that. So now it's really amazing to have a golden milk with all this longevity nutrient dense goodness for our breakfast coffee. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about raw Fresno, when it started, why it started, how can people, can people go there? Oh yeah, absolutely. We're open to the public. We've been um, here at the Galleria downtown inside, um, right behind the convention center. We've been here for, I think, six years. And so we're going on our seventh year here. And, um, like I said before, I started out with the, 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 the teaching classes and then the food, the teaching classes and then also uh, all the farmer's markets and traveling all over. Is, I follow this other food truck 
people, friends of mine, and they, and I really learned how they marketed themselves, how, how to really bring your customer to your restaurant. And that's why I wanted to start out with it being out into the public because we had to bring it to the people. There's not a lot of plant-based foods. There was only one other plant-based restaurant uh, in Fresno when I opened. There are a few others that are now more options, but there's not, we're the only, well, there's one vegan restaurant that was moved in next door, uh, comfort food, vegan comfort food. And so we are the only plant-based whole food restaurant in the Central Valley, California. Um, I'm not sure. If, I mean, we have a lot of travelers because we live in, you know, uh, Yosemite and National Parks and the Kings Canyon and Sequoia. We're so close to that. So we have so many travelers and they're, they seek us out. They find us with Happy Cow and Google or Google Maps. It's very simple. Just rawfresno.com or just raw food Fresno. I know everybody says it, raw food Fresno. But it, and those are some keywords that you can just Google us. But I, I do want to show you, um, well, first of all, we're open six days a week, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then Saturday, uh, 11 to 5. And we're closed on Sundays. And we have a delivery service. So every morning we have a subscription of about 10 meals that get delivered all over Fresno. And even the other small towns around nearby and um so what i was going to point at is back behind me is um uh, my logo and um a famous uh artist her name is rivka she she came in and it took my oh gosh i can't remember how many hours i think it was like 40 hours or more so each letter is like a tattoo. It has a description of um, this is my my granny in her garden, and this is me when I'm a little girl. This is my 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 family, my sister and brother, and my granny's house. And this is my dad's car lot that he opened as a. I mean, so every it's a little description. Here's the farmers market. So and a, a grant that I won through Whole Foods. And so the whole thing has the story of, uh, of raw Fresno right here in this, they call it a tattoo. That's really cool. What a, what a talent. Yeah, isn't it? So I just wanted, she was just showing me the view and I wanted to make sure that, that I can, uh, hi, Karen. So, um, these are some of my pictures. This is a uh, art hop area. So it would be live, beautiful pictures that when my son passed away, I had done, you know, I stayed inside for like an out of, of a year and a half. And um, so I got these, this camera and I just started taking pictures of through my window, this, the, the birds and just the beautiful life that was just amazing the light shining there so it's kind of hard but um and here's our cute little kitchen and here's susan she's our bakery my my bakery chef she's waving to you right now <laughs> i could turn this around so you could wow. wait oh i think i i don't know do i turn around okay and here's stephanie our wow. other Morning, gals. They take care of raw Fresno. They take care of us. And so we have a customer coming over right now that just came because I just, I made these five shepherd's pies. And they are to live for. The shepherd's pies are so amazing. I made them for Thanksgiving two years ago as an entree. And because we're open on Thanksgiving. And um, it's our busiest day of the year because there's nobody in Fresno that's whole food plant-based and they're not open on Thanksgiving. So we are always open on Thanksgiving every year. That is incredible. What's your most uh, popular item on the menu? 
It's called Beans and Greens, believe it or not. It is the most popular and it's a kale salad that is massaged with our Caesar salad dressing. We make everything from scratch. Nothing is made out of a bottle or a jar or a box. We make everything in-house right here. These two ladies and well, we have 10 employees. So uh, we have a lot going on all the time. And um, uh, I, I, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, what I was asking you, your most popular item, and you were saying you were open oh, Thanksgiving. Gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the beans and greens is the kale Caesar salad. So it's the kale and it's with the Caesar dressing. And then we put slow cooked Peruvian beans on top of it. And then we put fermented house sauerkraut that we ferment on top of that. And then avocado and then the cashew ranch drizzle. And so these are beautiful. And maybe before we leave, I'll show you one before somebody will order one here soon. Do you have a cookbook? I do have a cookbook that's not been published. I uh, worked on that during COVID and finally got it completed all the way to the last chapter. And I just need to finish up about the environment on the, in the last chapter. And then I'll probably add SOS on it because I didn't have any SOS on it during the time when I, when I, but uh, yeah, so we're, we've been SOS all this time and, uh, and we're offering it for rest for the restaurant here also. So if anybody wants SOS, we have like potato salad that we make and we have a list of different things that we have that are SOS free. That's great. What, what are your popular desserts? Let me show you. You're going to see my desserts. And, uh, so here's a chocolate crunch, cheesecake, coconut cream, cheesecake, and pumpkin. And then we have a mixed fruit berry. And then down below is my favorite is the lemon bars. And then tiramisu is in the back. And then this is a, um, a chocolate cupcake. And oh, look at I can go all the way back here. Look at that. What do you think? That's a German chocolate and a carrot cupcake and a pumpkin spice square and, and cinnamon rolls okay those and look then, amazing and then there's spring roll oh these are uh these are halloween swiss rolls that that looks incredible and they're all raw everything is raw vegan yes That's raw plant-based whole foods what do you use as your primary sweetener maple syrup Wow. Or and dates. Date. That's amazing. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. This is my grandson, Brody. Wow, <laughs> a cute name. He has his own YouTube channel also. Oh, he's so funny. That's, what's his YouTube channel about? Um, it's just all the fun stuff that he and I do together. I film him on like Snapchat. And uh, film him getting in the pool, swimming, jumping around, doing so fun stuff, whatever. And we were at the football game. His his foot his channel is called Brody's Amazing, awesome videos, isn't it? Awesome videos, amazing. Brody's amazing videos are. I'm so sorry. That's terrible. Anyway, it was so cute. We were at my other grandson's football game on Friday night and he had only 50 subscribers and he went around to all the audience and he came back about two hours later. He says, Nani, guess what? You're not going to believe it. Film me right now. And I started filming him. He says, I have a hundred subscribers. I have a hundred subscribers. And he, it's just so cute. And so I put that video on it about him getting his hundred subscribers. This fun stuff. When we went to Hawaii this last few months ago, we just had a blast and put all kinds of videos of him swimming in the ocean. 
Oh, that's great. You're actually going to make something for us today, aren't you? I am. I'm so where, where did you where did, did you go to any culinary school to learn all these beautiful recipes? I did go to Living Light Institute. Oh, what year did I went there too? What year did you go? Oh gosh. Uh, I don't know. I can't even, I didn't take the whole course. So I didn't do all of the courses. I did multiple different ones, the nutrition, the food nutrition ones. And um, I was just to say, I don't really need to make food pretty. I know how to make food pretty. That's, I used to kind of be against wanting to go there because of that. Cause I just felt like it was so important to really make the food delicious and nutritious and it shouldn't have to look pretty for people to want it. I was so goofy thinking that. I know people want to see beautiful food. And so it was, I was so grateful to be able to um, have that time with Sherry. Sorry, she's wonderful, I love her. Yeah, that was a fun, it was a fun experience going there. I'd love to know, and I'm sure the viewers would as well, what do you eat in a day when you're not at True North Fasting? <laughs> Well, believe it or not, I eat pretty much the same exact food that we serve at True North uh, or that they did because um, I've really turned into a mono food eater. I'm like you and I don't care if I have a lot of different things. I was so used to, you know, for so long eating specific things. And so it's really utilitarian for me. And um, so I eat to live. Um, and so the food, like for breakfast, I've sent pictures, I think, to you of my breakfast. And it's steamed broccoli, cauliflower, and zucchini, and steamed sweet potatoes, the Hannah potatoes. We love, thank you so much for letting us know about those. We, that's all we have. We eat those all the time. Or even our rescue kittens eat them too. They love the sweet potatoes. They're so good for them. And, yep. um, yeah, amazing. We just realized that the sweet potato is really good for eye health. And I didn't really know that, but the little kitten that we rescued, 15 weeks old now, her eye was completely closed shut and it's completely open and it's cleared out and everything. So, uh, and I found out that sweet potatoes really help eye health. So, should we talk about um, what I'm going to make? I love that. It's a kabocha squash. Would you mind if I just, I see two more questions in the chat, if you don't mind. And Stephanie says, do you ship to other states? Oh, did you freeze? Oh no, come back. Oh boy. What's with Zoom lately? Is she frozen for you guys or just for me? How do I get her attention? Oh, no. there we go. You you froze for a minute. You froze for a minute, but you're back. You're back. Are you back? Yeah. Okay. This is my wife, Rio. Hello. She's the rock star, our athlete. She hmm. runs. We're doing, um, we just started. She started before me. She's getting me on the bandwagon. Uh, we're doing a centennial the Centennial Decathlon. Decathlon. So we're working to be 100 and be active all the way up until 100. This is Dr. Pierre, Peter Atea's uh, protocol. So I've been working on the exercises for us. So I'm running, getting her into running. It's It's been really wonderful. So I'm so proud of her for doing it. I'm so grateful to you so much so i'm gonna cry i think here on tv yeah. our tv every day uh, is there is there a big uh, vegan community in fresno well i would say my wife has helped grow the vegan community in fresno i would i don't know if it's big relative to other places people often say you would think there's a big vegan community here but i think veganism is actually and i don't you know the word has got so many people got has so many different things about it plant, whole food plant-based right whatever you want to say but I think there's a growing interest just because people are now more aware. So I think like anything, it's just growing in popularity. We see more and more places offering, regular places, uh, restaurants are now offering vegan options. So I think it's just wonderful that we're seeing. 
Anyway, I'm going to let you get back to her, but I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you. And Naomi, Clark would like to know if any of your desserts are oil-free. Yes. Uh, some of our desserts, the brownie that I'm going to make today, the coconut bites are, you want to say hi? Come here and give me a hug real quick. I'm sorry. This customer of ours, I knew her forever before I had the tent, before I had anything. She used to, I met her and she's moving away to Oregon. And so this is, she's, uh, this is Debbie. Sorry to interrupt the program. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> hi, Debbie, she said. We have great support here. I apologize for that, but I haven't seen her in a long time and it's such a fun time to, to see. Um, that so you were you're going to do something with a kabocha squash. Yeah, yeah. You were talking about the dessert, but I think it's only the brownie and the coconut bite. There could be something else, but I'm positive. Yeah, so when I came back to True North, I had fallen in love with this when I was there. I had never had one before, before October last year. And so it was when I had it at home, I, one day I steamed it and I was like, hmm, this tastes like a dense egg, like the deviled egg, the part of the, of the yolk. And I, I started looking at it and I was just thought, wow, I could make a deviled egg sandwich. That sounds so good. So I made it. So I used, um, I'm going to show you all the ingredients right here. I've got it all sitting right here and I'm just going to bend this down and let you see. Nice. Can you see it okay? So you can, you can eat kabocha squash, even if it's not cooked. Uh, it's cooked. Oh, it is cooked. Not. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying that, um, I'm a raw terrian now I, I eat cooked food. Okay. You could see that. Beautiful. Okay. So what is this? This is the kabocha, obviously. And, uh, so I'm, yeah. Uh, Rio was just showing me what I am seeing. And so it, it is easier for you to show me. So this is the kabocha squash. I just took the peeling off of it after it being steamed. And uh, the, I just wanted to let you see that. And then here is the mushrooms. And I just put these in the food processor and chopped them up. And uh, so it's just very small oops, little pieces. I'm gonna put it in the right corner over here, sorry. Which side is the camera? Sorry. And then, then we have mustard. And I get, a, I don't know which, I'm really trying to figure out which side is the camera. There it is. There it is. Oh, perfect. So, so this is no salt. Gosh, there, I did. There you go. Okay. Apple cider vinegar. And then I use, uh, we make it here. SOS free ranch. I love it. And so I like to use a big bowl. You know, there's so many people I see when they start um, making something, they start with a really small bowl. And I just can't stand it um, because it doesn't seem like you could mix everything up. So I like to use a big bowl. And this is just so simple. You can just do it all in here together. And I think I'm just going to do half. This is, I just did a half of one. I'm not sure how much, I mean, I could make all of this. But 
I'm just trying to figure out compared to the amount of mushrooms, because you want it to be chunky in the texture. And so you can see how that texture is really good. Yeah, I think I can, I'll use some more of this. And then we're gonna put a little apple cider vinegar. I remember when I was a kid and I would eat egg salad sandwiches and it always had vinegar in it, it seemed like. So this is our ranch. So just a couple of teaspoons of that. And then here's the mustard. And then you just stir it up. Just chop it up, move it around. See how easy it is when it's in the big bowl? So much easier. Can you see that okay? Yeah, beautiful. Do you use your seeds for your, do you save your seeds from your kabocha squash? I do, and then I bake them and I season them. But they're so tasty. They're kind of like pumpkin seeds, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So then I had uh, this bread that I got um, when I travel, I get some bread and this is like a no sugar added, a German farm bread. And um, it has all good goodness, good enough. I don't rarely, rarely eat bread. So I toasted this and um, I guess I'll like, let's pair it in half, like serve it like a half a sandwich. And so you could put pickles in this um, or you could put some other, you know, a lettuce, piece of lettuce, maybe some avocado. And like a little sandwich. That looks delicious, actually. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, but, you know, just serving it like this, looking like a nice little sandwich. Uh, yeah. Susanna says, I've never steamed squash. Do you steam it whole or chop it into chunks? I, I can answer for me. I put it in my Instant Pot 8 quart in a steamer basket for about 10 minutes and it comes out perfect. Yeah, it's excellent. I just steam it myself. Uh, yeah, you don't have to use the Instant Pot with that. You can just use a steamer. We have an induction oven and is it called an induction? Uh, no, it's a stovetop, induction stovetop. And um, just has the timer on there. So yeah, it's excellent. We love that. You, you, steam, it, you steam it whole, right, Naomi? You, you don't cut it up to steam it or do you cut it up to steam it? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I do. I cut it in half. It's really dangerous. These are really hard to cut, but I get a really big, heavy butcher knife that's really sharp. And I, and I, and I get it like right here first. So I can chop it over on the side and then just be really careful. And then once you have it uh, in half, then you can lay it down that half size, flat size. And then you can use these ribs to see where you can just cut it. It makes it really easy. Just cut it into small little slices. So you could like, I just cook it a half of one. So you can cook a half of one, put the other half in the fridge um, and it works out well. I love kabocha squash. These are my favorite. Me too. I love to steam them and eat them. Just steam. Sometimes I'll air fry them and like put broccoli in it. It's delicious. Yeah. And the other thing that we use for uh, kabocha squash is uh, I put it in regular potatoes, like on the, um, that shepherd's pie that I made. It has sweet potatoes. No, it has uh, this kabocha squash plus regular potatoes. And so it makes it kind of a golden color, uh, like it's been cooked already and it doesn't have to be 
really browned. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, there's a question from Anne if you use other squashes like the red curry squash. Um, no, I haven't myself. Um, I haven't used the red curry squash, but that sounds interesting. Yeah. Squashes are great. I love squash. Yep, I do. Um, so do you want me to do the second one that I, I have? Would love and, and I'm explaining to people that you're not using actual recipes like you would to, to bake a cooked cake. You're using ingredients and it's, it's, you don't measure exactly, right? I'm pretty bad about that. But I mean, it is measured out that, I mean, I think I had like, in writing that I might have given you in writing. You just um, gave me a list of ingredients. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Well, I can give it to you. It's like a half a, a half a, yeah. I think on the first one, I did give you specifics, but then on the other ones, I didn't do any at all. But so I was gonna, was there a name, a name any other questions? Um, let me look. Uh, the mushrooms are raw, Kathy said. Are they? Are the mushrooms raw? Yes, they are. They're not cooked. They're just chopped up. And, um, so, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, Sarah is asking me if I cook my squash whole. Yes, I do. And I know I have a video on it, guys, on this channel. I'll see if I can link to it. I put the steamer basket in and it'd be because as Naomi was saying, it's very hard to cut a raw squash. So I steam the whole thing and then it cuts just like butter. A good butter knife goes through it and it's very oh, easy. Oh, wow. Okay. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I think I've done it one time like that, but I never did it again. I didn't, but that is really good. It's easier that way. So I was going to do stuffed marinated mushrooms, if you want. Love it. So here's the, I think this is what, two pounds or something from Costco of their organic uh, mushrooms. So that's what I use. We sell these at the restaurant. We're, we love marinated mushrooms and uh, so what I do is you empty those mushrooms into you separate the stems and the caps and I'm going to uh, turn down my camera now so you can see all my stuff here. And this is only three ingredients. This is like so simple. People keep asking if you'll ship your desserts. <laughs> yes, we can ship our desserts because we can freeze them and ship them frozen. Can we see this? Yeah, okay. perfect. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do first is, um, can somebody bring me a bowl or something for my mushrooms? I'm going to separate these. Um, I want to separate the mushrooms just to show you a few. And then the stems are what we're going to put in the food processor. And because the stems That's okay, thank you. I know, we thought that it was gonna be outside so that everybody could uh, have a fun time in here playing and eating lunch and talking. And I'm putting a little damper on their visiting, I think. <laughs> so, um, so it's the whole, the whole box of mushrooms that you would um, break those all up. And then I'm gonna, oh, wow. oh, is that your dog? Yeah, Bailey, somebody's here. We have a, we have a, a thing at 12 o'clock. So Bailey's letting, the, letting them in. Oh, good. 
I saw Bailey yesterday on your Wednesday show. Oh yeah. She's uh, a, she should have her own channel. It was so funny. Cause I, I go to a vegan doctor at the Weimar Institute, Dr. Neil Nedley, and he's the head of Weimar. And uh, it's the only place that people actually recognize me as chef AJ. And it's so funny. Cause they, they see Bailey first and they go, oh, that Bailey. <laughs> oh, how cute. Yep. Oh my goodness. Hi, Karen. How are you? Good. You want to come say something wonderful about me? No, I'm just joking. Um, so I'm going to make stuff marinated mushrooms. So now it's the garlic. This is the best part. I like to use a lot of garlic. I'm going to use at least three. Three. Yeah. And I just realized that I did something wrong. I'm going to just put these in here because I need to just do the garlic first by itself. So I'm going to do the garlic. You ready? Here we go. Oh, I'm not plugged in. We're getting it plugged in. Oh, I, I just saw your pants. They're, they're great. Oh, thank you. They're um, they're peppers, chili peppers. <laughs> and now the cilantro. I think I made this in a little while. And so you, you could put the stems in them or you can just pull it all off. And yeah, again, these are those kind of recipes that are just like so simple and you don't really need to know exactly the exact ingredients. But I love cilantro in it. Okay, you just pop that up. And now I'm going to put my stems of the mushroom. And I'm going to put a few. So, oh, first of all, I normally would marinate these. So, yeah, these would normally be marinated just like this. So you marinate the mushrooms and I apologize for skipping that step. Um, so you would marinate these with the light sodium tamari and it would be a half a cup of this and a full cup of lemon juice. And so that's what the marinade is. And so I'm going to use a few of these to have that, that flavor. And I'm going to put a little bit of the liquid in there. And then you just chop it all up together. Is that a robo chef? A robo it is. Yeah. Oh, Roboku. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, I remember working in the restaurant. That is a very good food processor. Oh, isn't it the best? We just, we, this is the second one I've gone through. Yeah. It, they're amazing. Yeah. So, and then I want to show you what it looks like when we, um, Oh yeah, you know what? I when Living Light Institute uh, closed, I bought their dehydrator. I have the commercial dehydrator from them. It has forty trays wow. on both top, top and bottom. It's a dual. When you were there, was uh, Chef Alina Love one of the instructors? Uh, no, she was not. But I know her. But no, she wasn't an instructor at that time. Yeah, she was my teacher. She was wonderful. Oh, I am. Uh, so then this is the 
the filling of the stuffed part. And then you're going to put the mushrooms. I want to make sure that I'm in the right view. And I'm going to scoop it. So I use this little um, scooper. Yeah. So it's just a really simple ingredient. Do you de dehydrate them after you stuff them? No, they're marinated for two to three days before we use them. Can you see them okay there? They look great. So that, cause George asked how long to marinate the mushrooms. So you're saying two to three days, wow. Yeah, so like when you go shopping, you know, go get your mushrooms and then just separate the caps from the stems and just marinate them right then and have them in the refrigerator. And then whenever you wanna make it, you know, two or three days later, then you just make the, the stuffing with those marinated mushroom stems. That sounds great. So, Roseanne says that your bio says you know sign language. Do you ever do vegan cooking demos for the deaf community? Oh, wow. I could because I have interpreters that are friends of mine, but I haven't done sign language enough to keep up with it, but it does help me understand some of our customers. I'm going to put the mushrooms away and we're going to start on the brownies. Okay. And the brownies is a quick recipe, isn't it? Yeah. But if, yeah, it is a very quick recipe. I don't know the time if we're running it was, late. It, yeah. It was just, we did start a little late and I do kind of, I actually am doing something for the food revolution in, in very soon. So that I don't mean to ever rush a guess, but we did start a little late. Oh, it's it's uh, one minute to 12. So if you can do this in a minute, you'd be like a real rock star. Well, I, well, I don't know. Should I do it in a minute? Should if I do can. the brownies? A minute okay. or two. Yeah. That can be a little you, over a minute. Okay. So we're going to have it like this. Yeah. That's what's nice about raw food. You don't have to wait for it to cook. Right. Exactly. So we're going to start with three cups of cashews and 20 dates. Those look like the medjool. Yes, they are the majul and they've already been pitted. We pit them ourselves. And then um, I think it's two thirds of a cup of cacao. Put that all on top. And then that's it. Let me see, where's my lid? Okay, well, that's it. But I don't have my lid here. Somebody. Maybe they took it. it away to wash it from the last ingredient. Yeah, they did. And so you just blend this until it's completely just incorporated. And then uh, I can show you. Can you hand me the brownies right there, please? Hand me the brownies, Alyssa. Can you hand me those brownies? Just hand them to her. And this is what they look like. Once they're all processed, yeah. And then you can just use like a, a scoop, like a little ice cream, a little mini ice cream scoop. And that's how we serve it, one or seven. Nice. And, and they, I, they, you can keep those in the freezer. They're so easy to make. I have a recipe in my book on process for them. I happen to use walnuts, but they're just so easy. Yes, absolutely. They are very easy. And uh, we use walnuts. That's what we use too. Nice. Very healthy. Very cool. God, I'd love to. Uh, how far away is Fresno from, I'm in, I'm near Sacramento now because your, your restaurant looks amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, I would love for you to come anytime. We are only, I think, what, two and a half hours, three hours maybe from uh, you. 
because we we do some events here and I know there's I, I know quite a few people in Fresno that come to our events here so I'm surprised they've never mentioned your restaurant before but that's so good Me to too. know that we'll ship your desserts and so I imagine they would call the restaurant to get that to happen right yes there's the phone number 559-250-5292 I'll make sure Thank I put you. that in the show notes. And do you have a presence anywhere on social media where people can follow you, maybe get recipes or inspiration? Yes, absolutely. On Facebook and Instagram. And I do have some classes on my YouTube channel. That's nice. Well, guys, the, your food looks amazing. That's all I can tell you. The, those desserts were show stopping. Mm, thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate do, you ever, do you ever, I know that Dr. Goldhammer is not a fan of this, so you don't have to accept it. But if you do eat balsamic vinegar ever, Thomas Allen from California Balsamic offers every guest the first time they're on two free bottles if you'd like to try it. Oh, thank you so much. We love balsamic, uh, California balsamic. We order from them all the time. Well, you and can so use your two free choices maybe to try a, a flavor that you haven't tried yet. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Yes. All of the different ingredients of things that you've suggested, we do them and they're great. And we really appreciate you. He has a new, thank you. He has a new one that's organic. It's not a sweet one. It's not a reduced one, but you never know. Somebody might like it. Oh, I want to try it. Absolutely. Right. Well, you're going to get an email very shortly where you get to pick your two choices. Thank you, Thomas, so much for doing that. And thank you, Chef Naomi. This was a wonderful presentation. And people like, what are the measurements? What are the measurements? She didn't give me the measurements. She gave me the ingredients. I can give them to you. I'll so, give you the measurements. We'll, we'll, we'll add them in just, a, in just a bit, you guys. Thanks again. This was a lot of fun. Love you. Thank you. Take care. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Dr. Ron Weiss for our monthly The Doctor Is In. Make sure you get those questions in advance. And to do that, just sign up.